Hey, Cassie, let's go and take a look. So I was reading through your writing here. I hate it. I, I, I don't like that. I don't like that you hate your work. So let's talk about this and, and let, oops, let's see what we can do here. I have some pretty good ideas and I've got some tips that I think are gonna, are gonna draw things together in a, in a way that it's gonna to make a little bit more harmony. I, I, you know, honestly, I think that when, in my experience, when I go through a layout and I say to myself, God, I, I just hate this. To me, it points to a lack of harmony. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if that comment helps or not, but I, I'll, let me just embellish on that a little bit by when I give my critique here. So I dropped this into my download so we can take a look at it. But um, so I think one of the issues that we're having, well, let, let me just start from here. In layout, there's a little trick that we can do in a layout that's really, really gonna improve the harmony. One of the problems with the layout is that the placement of the image, the image has him looking off the page this way. Now that creates a directional line and it creates, the, it, it forces the viewer to want to look away from the composition and off the page. Remember this in your design. Whenever you have an image, a really neat trick is to create a directional line based on the gaze of the, the, in, the person in the, the image. So whenever you use an image of a person, we, we can use that to our advantage. In this case, I think it would be simply transposing, placing the image over on this side and the type on this side. That way, if you set this up the way it is, the, his eyes will be pointing right to where the paragraph starts, boop, right there. And that's gonna create an enormous amount of, of, of harmony. I'm not so sure about bleeding off the page on one side. Um, I think that we, you could probably end up cropping this image so that here's the image here and then here's the type here okay um i did some there's some issues with the type itself and i think one of the, this might be one of the reasons why you're not particularly fond of your, of your work the typeface itself or the i should say the type set itself is set in, in justified but we've got these enormous rivers um these spaces these unusual spaces and that is a byproduct of justified type settings one of the things we can do to remedy that is over in the course announcements, I have an announcement on specifically dedicated on how to set up your justified paragraphs if you elect to do so. Personally, I don't, I think that left the line, right rag is, is a much superior way. That's not, I don't, not saying you have to change it. It's, it's a matter of, of preference. It's a good practice to set up your justified type settings, but you definitely want to take a look at that announcement. Um, whoops, let me get rid of it. So you can get rid of that announcement so that, that uh, or take a look at that announcement so you can take a look at, at how to set this up correctly. Uh, okay, um, I think one of the things that would, would probably be really a neat idea here is to use a drop cap. Um, maybe uh, something like this. It's, it would be unusual to have a drop cap and then have the rest of his name. And I, I think that that is interesting that that uh, you've got his name bolded. So you are attempting to draw some sort of uh, emphasis in the opening paragraph, and that's smart, uh, or in this case, the only paragraph. But what I would say is this, you can use a drop cap, just transpose this, say, born in Nagasaki, Japan, uh, Kizu Ishigaro, uh, um, something, you know what I'm saying? So what we're doing is we're not starting with his name, we're starting with some other word so that we can drop cap that and maybe go three lines, two or three lines deep on that drop cap and really add some interesting um, engagement to this portion of the composition. And you could even take that drop cap and use this color to draw a connection between the timeline and the type. I think that would be a neat, neat uh, way to go. I think it was very smart for you to, um, oh, you know what, let's go through your type real quick. Uh, Do some research on where and when to italicize because some of these, I, I think, some of these um, uh, titles could be italicized. I don't see any numbers or number spans or all caps. So if you do end up using all caps or numbers, well, the numbers are okay in the timeline, but if you ever put numbers in your body copy, you want to reduce the size, or what would be better is to use old style figures if they're available in a typeface. Um, if, if you, th those are, like, that's covered in the course announcements. So if you can't set your, um, numbers to old style, it's best to reduce them by 20% or so, or eyeball it. And the idea is to work them more harmoniously into the X height and the ascender height of the, 
uh, cap rate because the numbers default numbers stand out just too dramatically in when they're set with body copy. So we always, always try to make adjustments on numbers in body copy. It's not necessary in the, the um, um, timeline because we're, you're not finding those next to other numbers. All of your numbers are at the bottom of the timeline. You see what I'm saying? I do see that you have italicized those numbers. You are, again, attempting to draw um, attention to the numbers or to emphasize the numbers. My recommendation here would be to bold them instead of italicizing them. Um, okay, now the timeline itself isn't necessarily designed, okay? I think it was smart to build the timeline as a, a vertical composition instead of horizontal, since the composition itself is vertical. That makes sense. The problem is that this is basically just a, a remember, a timeline has got to be designed. OK, so a timeline that isn't designed is basically a chronological listing of event, events. And that's what I see we have here. Now, one thing that we could do here that would really draw some effect from the front of the poster. Remember when you had the silhouette of the, the head around the front of the poster and I thought that's overkill. It's kind of force feeding the viewer. I mean, if you want, you can you can draw a silhouette of a of a head around here. OK place it in the center and then start using it as a timeline where you're bringing up events from the left and the right of the timeline you see what i'm saying then you have just a silhouette i mean a kind of a contour uh, did i say silhouette before i didn't mean that i meant like a contour drawing of a, the shape of a head around the brain where the the brain is now you see what i mean so so what we're doing is we're really indicating that that's a brand. What that's going to do is it's going to create an aha moment where the viewer is going to come to the back. They're going to see the uh, contour line lines around the head showing the brain up top. And that's going to indicate that that configuration at the front was indeed a brain. The viewer is going to go, oh, I get it now. And that's a very powerful tool in graphic design. Very powerful. I like to call it the aha moment. It's where you set something up and don't define it until later in the composition, allowing the viewer a sense of accomplishment when they go, oh, I get it, right? So then they're going to go back to the front, look at the front and go, God, that does look like a brain. How clever. Do you see what I'm saying? So uh, my recommendation here is to assemble, just draw the, the, solo, um, the, the contour line of the head, place the brain up top, and then start using that to uh, uh, bring your timeline uh, events off, off that, okay? I think it'll work. Let me know if you, if you like the idea or just go ahead and, and for I'm perfectly fine if you use that idea. That's what's perfectly fine. Um, but at any rate, so uh, again, so looking for appropriate use of um, old style numerals or reduction of numerals, looking for, well, in this case, rags, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm looking for regs, but in this, in the case of a justified type, we wouldn't have regs, right? But if you do decide to change it, I'd like to see the regs adjusted. Uh, proper use of M dash, N dash, and dash. Um, proper use of small caps as opposed to all caps, which I, a lot of these I really don't see uh, ap application therein, but this it could change when you continue designing. And then also, um, oh, what was the other thing? Caps, small caps, M dash, N dash, old style. I think that's it. Not any rate, any rate. Yeah, I, I believe that's it. But um, oh, proper use of italics. Yes. Okay. So um, okay. So, but I, I think it's a really good start. So so so. Um, let me know, uh, or if you have any questions, or if I can provide any clarifications, let me know. But this will come to you. I promise. I promise it will. Don't get discouraged. Um, step away for a couple hours if you have to, but this will definitely come to you. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know. Thank you very much.